The powerful word of God. The powerful word of God. In Jeremiah chapter 23, and uh, verse 29, if you're not real familiar with Jeremiah, you know that you should know, if you've been reading your Bible, you should know that uh, Jeremiah was almost by himself as far as prophesying the true word of God. There were a few other prophets around this time that were true to the word of God. Uh, but they weren't as well known as Jeremiah. And maybe it's because he was younger. I don't know. Uh, but uh, he suffered so much because of his prophecies uh, concerning the nation of um, Judah. And he's fighting against all these other prophets who want to tell Judah that everything's fine. God's, God loves us and he's going to take care of us and it's basically an attitude of we don't have to watch what we do. We don't have to uh, behave, in other words. We don't, we don't have to live according to God's standards because he loves us. God is a God of love after all. And it makes no difference what I'm like. I don't have to uh, live under God's rule. I can just do what I want and God's going to take care of me. That's the story in a nutshell. And so because Jeremiah didn't follow the program, the, you might say the denominational program, he was criticized horribly to the point of uh, being ostracized and penalized and put in prison, put in a pit. And so anyway, that's the background. Jeremiah says here in verse 29, um, Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. So his problem, the problem that God has with these other prophets is, first of all, they're not speaking God's word. They're not speaking uh, from uh, a word of prophecy from God. They're just, oh, hey, I like what he said. I'll just say what he said, maybe put a little bit different twist on it, make it sound like it's from me. But basically just everybody's borrowing from everybody else. And nobody's really prophesying the word of God except Jeremiah. And, and so God says, is not my word like a fire? Now, fire is a horrible thing. Just looking at images on TV about how uh, people have lost their homes due to fire. And, and it's just, it, it saddens one to see that happen to somebody who loses their home. And, 
and it's so destructive, it's so powerful. And uh, I was thinking about when, uh, when we were out in Colorado and way out on the west side of Colorado, we were uh, visiting Martha's family out in uh, Grand Junction and uh, just the night before we got there, a fire started and it wasn't very big. And so they didn't seem to put much importance on it right away. They didn't, they didn't start fighting it. Personally, I feel like if they had caught it right away, they might have uh, saved a lot of uh, man hours fighting that fire because it grew and it grew into one of the largest forest fires in uh, Colorado up to that point. And uh, it was huge. And, and so uh, God's word is like a fire. It's powerful, it's mighty. Uh, like a hammer that breaketh the right the rock in pieces. Then over in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. See how much of this verse you can quote. I'll start it, you all try to finish it. For the word of God is quick. Good. Word of God is quick. It means it's alive. Quick sand is not quick because it moves fast. It's quick because it seems to have a life of its own. And when we are quickened, we are brought to life. The Word of God is quick. It's alive and powerful. Powerful. So we're looking at the powerful word of God. You see, it's not just any knowledge that will result in experiencing God's power. Only the knowledge of his word can lead a person to the true knowledge of him and consequently his power. General or scientific knowledge won't do it. Knowledge of various religions won't get you there. Studies about God, Christianity, or theology can't provide the experience of God. We have students in a uh, universities who are taking religion classes but they're not getting any closer to understanding the power of God through those religion classes only knowledge that's based on God's word will produce a genuine experience of God and his power the reason for this is that the power of God is revealed and experienced in his word. To know his word is to know and experience his power. So that you can know what to look for, here's some powers contained in God's word. And, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, because so many of these verses should be familiar to you, I'm going to start the verse and see if you all can finish it. Okay? Think you can? First of all, <coughs> we need to understand that the Word of God is our means of attacking and defeating Satan. And 
It's our protection against Satan. Ephesians 6, 17, and take the helmet of salvation and, say it loud, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Good. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The sword. You know, of all those elements that are mentioned there in Ephesians that are what we understand to be the Christian's armor, there is only one piece of equipment that is offensive. It is the, what we can attack with. That's what we mean by offensive. When we talk, when we're looking at a, uh, any kind of sports offense, you're on the attack. And isn't it interesting that the Word of God is offensive? It's offensive and that's what we use to attack and it's offensive because the world doesn't like it. The world just does not like it. Um, this is going to be tougher. Psalm 119 verse 114. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I no, not trust. I hope in thy word. I hope in thy word. Um, it's Father's Day, so I better read this one. 1 John 2, 14. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. See, it's the Word of God that allows us to overcome Satan, his attacks on us. Then it is revealing, 1 Kings 17, 24. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and that the Word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. Very good. The word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. It's revealing. Because Elijah was speaking the word of God, the woman uh, understood that he was a man of God. It revealed him to her. Uh, some other verses just for reference for you. First Chronicles 17, 3, uh, where uh, the word of God came to Nathan. And verse 4, go tell David, my servant, thus saith the Lord, thou shalt not build me a house to dwell in. So it revealed God's will to Nathan. Then notice it is everlasting. You ever uh, come across books on your shelf, bookshelf that you think, "Why? I, I I can't remember what that book is all about." I I don't know if I still have them, but at one time I had a lot of my old college books, and. Uh, you know, they don't mean a whole lot to me. <laughs> uh, they just, they don't, uh, they don't give me any kind of, uh, I hate to use the word inspiration, we, we overuse it, but they don't, they don't do anything for me. 
They've gone by the wayside. But Isaiah said, the grass withers, the flower fadeth, but right, the word of our God shall stand forever. Isaiah 40, verse 8. I, uh, Psalm 119 and verse 160. Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth I see lips moving, but nobody wants to put voice behind them. Forever. Righteous judgments endureth forever. Then it rebukes and it refutes. Give you an easy one. First Timothy three or second Timothy, pardon me. Second Timothy. 316 all scripture good profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness it rebukes and it reproof it refutes and Notice also that the Word of God is a source of life. It reproduces. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. But, but he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not... All right. Do your best to say it all together. Okay? Everybody together. All right, then parable that's told in three places in the gospel, Luke 8, 11 says, now the parable is this, the seed, the seed is the word of God. Good. Why, why did he call it a seed? Because seeds grow. Seeds grow. And they have to, uh, they, uh, they germinate. And they bring forth more than what is planted. Um, Psalm 119, verse 50. This is my comfort in my affliction. For thy word hath quickened me. Good. Thy word hath quickened me. Very good. Thy word hath quickened me. And this is what we were talking about earlier. Quicken, quick means alive. So <laughs> thy word has brought me to life. And what kind of life? Life in Christ. He's, he has uh, brought, brought you through the new birth. And you need to understand, no one gets saved apart from the Word of God. Now, you may say, but, well, Brother Gray, are you saying it's... Uh, not uh, good for us to hand out tracts? Uh, no. Because those tracts that you get from here, anyway, have the Word of God. The Word of God is presented through those tracts. And so, uh, yes, tracts are good when they are teaching from the Word of God. Directly referring to the Word of God. Uh, Psalm 119, verse 107. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord. According to, 
according unto thy word. Very good, Charlie. And Psalm 119, verse 149. Hear my voice according unto thy loving kindness, O Lord. Close to 107. Yeah. Quicken me according to thy judgment. Very good, Shirley. So it is the source of life. Uh, let's review real quickly where we've come so far. It is our means of attacking, defeating Satan, and protecting us. It is revealing. It is everlasting. It rebukes and refutes. It is the source of life. It re reproduces. Its, uh, reproduces. And then it convicts and brings repentance. It cleanses. Um, In Acts 19.18, there are these magicians, sorcerers uh, that uh, had been making their money from their curious arts, but many of them got saved, and many Verse 18 of Acts 19. Many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the, the word of God and prevailed. Very good. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. The word brought conviction to their hearts. <clears throat> you probably won't know this one. Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing. Oh, I'm sorry, you all did know it. <laughs> There's another one you probably don't know. Psalm 119, verse 9. Wherewithal? That's right. Taking heed thereto according to thy word. So, you want to cleanse your way? By the way, it's not just good for young men. It's good for young women and old men and old women. And it's good for those in between. All right? But you want to cleanse your way? You say, I need to, you know, so many people. I can remember Martha's dad dealing with one young lady uh, for so long, picked up her, I think it was just a son, picked him up for church. And he dealt with a little boy's mom for so long. And <clears throat> she had to, she kept saying, I gotta, I gotta get myself cleaned up. I gotta get myself cleaned up before I can come to church. I get myself straightened up. And he kept trying to tell her, you will not do it. You've got to get to church. Get into God's word. Then you'll get cleaned up. Yeah. And that's, that's what so many people misunderstand. You take heed to the word of God Pay attention to what it says. Follow it. And that's how the young man cleanses his way. Another verse that you probably don't know. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Good. That I might 
have not sinned against thee. Psalm 119, verse 11. So then it, it effectively works in guiding and redirecting man. Uh, 1 Peter 2.25 For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Very good. You're now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Uh, Psalm 119 verse 32 I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. Isn't it interesting he doesn't say I'm just going to casually walk after thy commandments? I will run after the, the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. <clears throat> uh, verse 35 of Psalm 119. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for for therein do I delight. Very good. Verse 67, before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept my word. Have I kept thy word? Very good. So it effectively works in guiding and redirecting men. <laughs> It guides us, puts us in the right path. Then it sanctifies. John 17, 17. Say that again louder and slower. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is true. Good. Did everybody hear that? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Ephesians 5, 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Talking about the local church. Then, so it uh, sanctifies and it creates Hebrews 11, 3. Through faith we understand that I think she said. Hebrews 11, 3. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. That was one of the highlights of our trip into Kentucky. And we had, we had several. I mean, there were uh, churches that we just had a great time with. And, uh, but... We got to go to the Creation Museum up in uh, northern Kentucky, up close to Cincinnati. Um, and uh, it just pointed out, just made it so clear to us, made it vivid to us, the creative work of God and helped us to see um, how that evolution is no good explanation for how this world came to be. And, uh, but to think that God spoke the world into existence. How did he, how did this world come into existence? God spoke it into existence. Yeah. This world uh, 
The worlds were framed by the word of God. Uh, that's something else that you don't you don't think about. If you're me, you probably don't think about this much about the fact that it doesn't say the world was framed by the word of God. It's the worlds were framed by the word of God, and that's one of the great things that we got to see in that creation museum. We we went to a planetarium and, and we uh, got to sit back and uh, had to be careful because those chairs were really comfortable. <laughs> and, but we sat back and we're looking up into this, this round uh, movie screen, I, I guess. I, I don't know what, what to call it, but we're looking up and, and they they show you uh, where the earth is and then the sun and the, the other planets around, uh, revolving around the sun and, and how big the sun is compared to the earth and, and, and how many of the planet earth would fit into the sun. And that is just overwhelming to think about. But then they take you further out into the Milky Way and you start seeing all these other stars and, and their planets and then you see they, they show you a picture of another star they, they zoom in on that star and you're looking at that star and they tell you how many thousands maybe millions of our sun would fit into that, that star. And you're just, wow. At least Martha and I were. Maybe you wouldn't do that, but we were just like, that's, that's amazing. And then they, they show you the, the biggest star that has been discovered to this point. And now millions of other stars could fit into that star. And you're just like, oh my. And then all of a sudden they take you back. They zoom out or zoom in and take you back to Earth. And it's like amazing. That out of all this universe, who created it all. God, who created it all, cared about me. Little old me. has sent his son to die for me. That's just a, a speck. It's not even, I'm not even a, a speck in the universe. Second Peter 3 and verse 5 talking about atheists and all truth. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Two more. It gives wisdom and these three verses are all together in the Bible, but it's not like one goes right into the other. I mean, they're not all tied together, uh, basically. But Psalm 119, verse 98, that, 
Thou through thy commandments hast made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. It is his commandments. God's commandments are ever with the writer. And he says, it's made me wiser than mine enemies. Think about that. God, you stay in God's word. Stay in his commandments. And God will make you wiser than your enemies. Verse 99 of Psalm 119. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For thy testimonies are my meditation. Verse 100. I understand more than I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. All those people that everybody thinks is so great Plato, Socrates, oh, they were so wise. Trying to remember one of them drank hemlock, killed himself. Because wasn't wasn't that wise? And just recently I, I read you a quote uh, about uh, oh my goodness, it just popped into my head, but it didn't get all the way up there. Uh, trying to think the uh, great uh, English scientist Newton Newton said I feel like here I've come to the end of my life and and I feel like I've just been a kid playing on the beach with all the wealth of the ocean of knowledge out there before me and I've just been playing with pebbles on the beach. He gives wisdom. Finally, it illuminates. Again, a couple of verses, a, a verse that you probably don't know. Thy word is a lamp Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalm 119, verse 130. The entrance of thy words giveth light, giveth understanding unto the simple. So God's word is powerful, sharper than any two edged sword. No other book could these things be said about, about that book. So. Remember, when you pick up your, <clears throat> do I have to say it, pick up your King James Bible? You've got a powerful book in your hand. And it's powerful because it's all there. And I just read, I keep meaning to look it up, but one version of the so-called version of the Bible, leaves out study to show thyself approved unto God. Leaves that verse out. Uh, and I think it's more than one version. I think it's like all of the perversions leave that verse out. So, study your King James Bible. Let's be dismissed. Father, we thank you so much for your word. Bless in our service today, direct in all that we do, all that is said here. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Break time. Break time. Thank you, Glendon.